You know, the whole issue with wigs. Wigs. Now, this is a very, very big machloket. This is a very big, dramatic issue in Judaism. And it has been for some time, especially in recent couple of generations, where a couple of Ashkenazi poskim said that a certain type of wig is allowed, and then people translate it to something completely different, where they're pretty much saying that all wigs are allowed, and not only all wigs are allowed, there are wigs that are more beautiful than natural hair, and you could sweep the flow with the wig, and you're a little movie star. This is not what the poskim said, even the Ashkenazis. Number two, then you have, yeah, but there was also a couple of Sephardics. And one is saying that one of the great poskim of Tzion Abba Shaul said, yeah, you're allowed to have wigs. And he was Sephardic, which is very rare for a Sephardic to say that wigs are allowed. He was like a shmata. But no, as a matter of fact, uh, my Rav is the Talmud of Rav uh, Gidon ben Moshe, which is one of the main students of Rav Tzion Abba Shaul, who actually wrote the book with Rav Tzion Abba Shaul that put the answer about the whole wig being allowed or not allowed. And he says, no, he didn't, Rav Tzion Abba Shaul didn't allow the wig. All he said is that a woman is allowed to wear a wig next to a husband inside the house if he's doing Kriyat Shema. Meaning, if somebody wants to do Kriyat Shema, he's not allowed to do Kriyat Shema next to a woman that doesn't have her hair covered. His wife is not hair, her hair is not covered, even though she's his wife, he's not allowed to do Kriyat Shema next to her. Not allowed to do Kriyat Shema. This is also the problem of what, you know, you go to certain shuls where, like reform and conservative shuls, where the men and women pray together, it's a problem. It's not only a problem that the rabbi is usually a dog or a cat or a homosexual, <laughs> It's also a problem because a, uh, you have the uh, people are, uh, you know, mixed. So now, if somebody has, if there's a woman that's not covering her hair, that is a, uh, is it okay? A woman is not covering her hair, you know, to do crotch money stuff. So if Tiona Bashol said, no, if she wears a wig, that's sufficient for the husband, our own husband, to do Kriyat Shema next to that sufficient covering of the hair. He didn't say go outside and cover the hair. People now, mistranslated right, it. Right, so now there's people mistranslated it. And there's even a machloket, even between another student of his, another student of Rav Tzion Abashol, that according to somebody, I never heard it from the actual student itself, but according to somebody, he says, no, he heard differently. He said that it's okay. Because the problem is that Rav Tzion Abashol, his own life wore weak. Yeah. Now, in the book, Echtov Israel by Rabbi Fine Kachlon, he wrote an answer to this that Rabbi Gidon ben Moshe said. And he said, listen, when somebody came up to Rabbi Tzion Abashol and said, listen, Kvod how are you saying you're not allowed to do a wig if your own wife wears a wig? Your daughter-in-law is wearing a wig. How are you saying that? And Rabbi Tzion said, did you come to me to ask me what's allowed or what do people do? <laughs> you understand? That's smart right there. So, just because his wife did it doesn't mean that uh, it's allowed. The same goes when somebody came to Rabbi Vadia. Rabbi Vadia, was very, very strong against wigs. Very strong oh, against wow. wigs. He's, he's recorded multiple times about being very strong against wigs, but somebody, one time a chutzpan, came to him in, you know, in one of the shiurim, said, Call the Rav. How is it that your uh, daughter-in-law, your own daughter, I'm not really sure if it was a daughter or a daughter-in-law, wears a wig? And you're saying not to wear a wig. Oh, Vadya says, yes, there's a place for her in Gainom also. There's a place for her in Gainom also. He wasn't, uh, he wasn't joking around. But if everyone is not doing it, then like, why should I do it? You know, it's hard. Because you are obligated to do what Hashem says, not what people do. If you were going to just compare yourself to what people do, then you're going to, within a week, you're going to stop keeping everything. Why? Because you have seven and a half billion people. No, normal religious people do. If they were normal religious people is what? A couple of million normal religious people? 
out of the couple of million normal religious people, not everybody necessarily has the highest level of emunah. Some yes, some no. So the point being here is that sometimes I have, to go back to the issue at hand, sometimes I have an argument with somebody about wigs. And uh, at the end of the argument, you tell them, listen, if you're Ashkenazi and you want to rely on the Ashkenazi poskin that say you have wigs, fine. But you have to look at what Rav Yashiv, the leading Ashkenazi posek at his time, of Kanievsky, all of the major poskin, even the ones that said, Rav Yashiv didn't say it's not allowed. But even if you look at the couple, the couple that said it's allowed, the couple, none of them, that's not the biggest poskim in the world, but the couple that said it's, that it's allowed, they never said it's allowed that you have to have, the, to have a wig from, uh, from your head all the way to your, uh, you know, to your uh, stomach. They said, if you're going to have a wig, it has to be short, it has to be modest. So that's number one. It can't make it more attractive. So that's number one. Number two, when you compare the wigs that they permitted in their days versus the wigs of today, the Rabbanim are saying that the wigs of those days, even a blind person would have known it's a wig. Meaning they looked like straw. They looked like, they looked terrible. So to say that, you know, the wigs of today, they look better than, better looking than the, uh, the natural born hair. Obviously this is not the same wigs that they permitted. That's number two. Number three, you have another issue. You have another very big issue. There's only a couple that say it's okay. But one of the G'dolei Ado said, after doing research, I found there's at least 85 poskim that say it's not allowed to wear a wig under any condition. <coughs> at least 85 of the leading poskim say it's not allowed at all. So let's say you have two, three, maybe four. Say it's okay, five. Those five are better than the other 85 of the biggest giants of the generations. So your whole life you're going to say it's okay to listen to those five, to those three, to those two, but to go against the 85, you're, you're okay with that? Because the, other, the ones that say it's not okay, they're not just saying it's not okay, but you know what, don't worry about it. The ones that are saying it's not okay, like for example, the Baba Sali, Baba Sali says, a woman that wears a wig is going to see the downside of it when she goes to Geno because they're going to use the wig as material to burn her. They're not very nice about it when they're saying it out loud. They're not saying, ah, it's not a big deal. It's a problem. The ones that are against wigs, it's a very, very serious problem. So you have 85 at least. So that's, that's number three. <coughs> number four, that I don't think any is, is the biggest one. It's the biggest atomic bomb. Because it's the only one that no one's addressing right now. If you want to listen to the poskine, to this one, to that one, fine. Let's say you found yourself an excuse. Let's say you found yourself an excuse that you're going to listen to the poskine and wear a wig. Fine. Ashkenazi, Sephardi, whatever you want to be. Here's the problem that no one's addressing. After doing some serious research, and Bezat Hashem will come out with something eventually, like some movie of some kind or whatever, but after doing some serious research, market research, which is what I did for 16 years for a living, it's almost impossible, it's almost impossible to get a wig that doesn't come from Abu Dazara. Hmm. 99.99999% of all wigs come from India and China and they get their wigs from their temples. People are as, as a korban to their false gods, shave their head. That's their, they do it every year. And according to statistics, they said that out of the billion people approximately that India has, Every family, every person has, has donated his hair at least twice. Every, so two billion people pretty much donated just from India. At least, the minimum. There are tens of thousands of tons from these temples to such an extent that everyone knows that the Vatican, 
The Abu Dazra of the Vatican is the number one richest entity in the world. Right? The Vatican, they own more real estate than McDonald's. Permit. Who's the second richest entity in the world? I'm talking about entity bigger than Apple, bigger than IBM, bigger than Walmart. The Vatican is bigger than all of them. Who's number two? Buddhist. The Indian temple where they donate the hair. What do they got? Because there's six people donating the hair? No, because there's lines out the door, out the building, out the street, out of the city. Every single day people donating the hair. Pilgrims donating their hair. So now, there's different shows you can look up on the internet if you want. You can do your own research if you'd like until we get our research. It's going to take some time. Uh, you know, put it into I mean, something. But pretty much you see that wigs. all of the wigs are coming from this. They, but what happens, there was a big balagan about a little over 10, 12 years ago where somebody said this, look, all the wigs are coming from India. So the Gdoleado made a big stink about it. There was a big thing. They started burning all the wigs in Yerushalayim. But then somebody came out and said, no, 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 no. We're going to get kosher wigs. <laughs> We're going to go watch. We're going to go to India and make sure that the people we're getting their hair from are not doing a fight of worship. Now, whoever is naive enough to believe this nonsense, good luck to you. What can I tell you? I can't help you. I can't, I can't help somebody that's not willing to help themselves. Or they say, no, no, we're getting them from Europe. That's what most people said. No, no, we're getting European wings. We're getting European wigs. Yeah. When was the last time you saw an Italian woman shaving their hair? Never. Never. Why? Because they value their beauty more than they value their life. That's true. That my wife's Italian, I know. Trust me, yeah, they love you. My, my wife, Boko is a very beautiful woman. She knows. She, she's the one that told me this. She goes, are you serious? you think that somebody Italian is ever going to shave their head? A few bucks. For a few dollars? For a million dollars, she wouldn't shave her head. What, are you crazy? Who shaves their head? A European wig? No, no, so that's what we do. Okay, so it doesn't make sense that the Italian are going to shave their head. It's like, okay, maybe the French. French French are even worse. No chance they're going to shave their head. They value their beauty even more than the Italians. Okay, maybe the English. No chance in the world. So we start looking all over Europe. No way, no way. It's not part of anyone's heritage. So then we start doing research. We found this whole uh, video... Uh, by a uh, big news organization research place, a guy that, uh, uh, unfortunately a Jewish guy, that started the wig business, like made the, the whole hair extension business, uh, maybe like 25 years ago. <laughs> and it's, of course, <laughs> so this, this person, they had a whole interview about him. Guy became a billionaire. <laughs> this. And uh, at least in this world, he's a billionaire. In the next world, Hashem <laughs> Rechem. But nonetheless, he shows you his whole process of where this European wig is coming from. And you see all of the European wigs, all of the everything wigs, India. It just says everything, Europe. it just says you. Why? Because it goes from India, then it goes for processing in China. So it says made in China then. Then China sells it to England or France or some other place. And then they do the next step of the processing. Once you start touching it, painting it, you know, the, the, you, know so you do something to it, it becomes yours. So then somebody asks, okay, what about the blonde wigs? When was the last time you saw an Indian woman that's blonde? My friend, they paint them. Yeah. And you see in the same, same movie, they paint them blonde, they paint them red, no they paint them whatever, whatever color you want. Whatever color you want, they paint them. And they show you the whole process, and it's all coming from India. Now, to say that there's... Why do I say 99.9%? Because it's always possible, unlikely, but possible, for somebody to go to somebody else and say, listen, I want to buy your hair. And that person saying, okay. Some, I don't know, some Israeli... I actually have a cousin like this. Uh, her daughter wanted to be a hero, and she wanted to donate her hair to some cancer patient. Yeah, I heard about that. So an Israeli girl donated her long hair to some cancer patient. Okay, but how many Israelis are doing this? Six? Seven? They're not supplying the entire wig business. Or you have some woman in Wisconsin, grew her hair over 20 years, she sold it. Okay, that's it. She grew it. She sold it. It's over. How many of those women in Wisconsin and Iowa do you have? They're not supplying the tens of thousands of tons of wigs every year. 
So that's why I say 99.9%, it's possible that you may have the one, but it's unlikely. Why? Because the overwhelming majority of them <coughs> is coming from India. So now you have a bigger problem than all of the Ploskin. You have a bigger problem than whether it's allowed to wear a wig or not allowed to wear a wig, whether it's long or it's short, whether it's black or it's white or it's red. You have a different problem. Why? Because this specific issue, no one allows. What is this issue? Benefiting from Abu Dazara. Once something was ever used for Abu Dazara, you are never allowed to benefit from it. Gemara Masechet Abu Dazara. There's a whole Gemara about it. You're never allowed to benefit out of it. No Posex is going to tell you something different. Once, it, once it's used for Abu Dazara, that's it. You must destroy it. So when Hashem said, Am Yisrael, go to Eretz Yisrael, but burn all of the, uh, the uh, Ashur trees. Why burn the trees, me skinny? Why are we going to burn the trees? We don't need to burn the trees. It's hot. We don't need it. It's not New York where it's freezing cold. No, no, no. All of those trees were used for Abu Dazara. Once they were used for Abu Dazara, once somebody bowed to them, must destroy them. You can't even look at them. You can't benefit out of them. You must burn them. You must destroy them from the face of the earth. You can't even make uh, pots and pans. You can't make nothing from them. You must destroy them. Once a wig comes from a source of Abu Dazara, you must destroy it. So now, who can tell me with confidence? What woman in the world can tell me or herself, really? When, me, who cares about me? Who can look in the mirror? What woman in the world can look in the mirror with her nice long wig and look in the mirror and says, you know what? I am 100% confident that my wig came from a righteous person that's not doing idol worship. Sure. 100% sure. It has to be 100%. It can't be 90. Why? Because if it's 90, you're, you're actually an idol worshiper. Supporting. You're supporting idol worship. It's not like it's a small sin. Like, listen, you ate, uh, you know, uh, you ate something that's not like glot. It's kosher, but it's not glot kosher. It's not bet yourself. It's not bet yourself. It's not, okay, it's kosher, but it's not like the greatest kosher level. No, it's not that. It's idol worship or not. That's a serious problem. That's a serious problem. So now you have yourself a serious problem. So now I have these debates to go back. You guys even remember the original argument why I even brought up this whole wig situation? So I said that sometimes I have debates with people that I know they're looking for the truth. I remember a few lectures that I did in New York. I, uh, I said something that Rav Nisim Yagen said a long time ago. Zechet Tzadik Livacha. And he says this. Wig, no wig. Only one question to anybody, when anybody wears a wig, it's because they're trying to fulfill the will of Hashem. They're trying to be righteous. It's not, they're not wearing a wig because they want to look like uh, Paris Hilton or uh, some other uh, prostitute. <coughs> they're wearing a wig because they are trying to do the will of Hashem, they're trying to be righteous, cover their hair. Usually. Wig, no wig. Doesn't anybody ever ask themselves the question, who's the only person Who's the only woman that we mentioned in the Torah that showed her hair? The Sota, the wayward woman, the woman that's being accused of possibly cheating on her husband. Part of the embarrassment of trying to convince her and intimidate her to admit that she cheated on her husband so they don't have to have her drink this water and kill her is by taking off the mitbacha, taking off the hair covering and showing her hair. Meaning that even a woman that cheated on her husband, even of a woman that's a cheater, even of a woman that's a prostitute, still would not go around with hair uncovered if she's married. She's scared away. Right. So here's the thing. So, so Rav Nisimi again is asking the question. Why does everybody want to look like the sota? Big news. Why does everybody want to look like the sultan? It's not a compliment to look like the sultan. So now you have yourself a serious problem. So I, sometimes I have this question, and Baruch Hashem, when I said this in the New York lecture, Rabbi Zitron, which Bezat Hashem, I'm going to do a lecture by his place tomorrow. You have someone argue with you in that lecture? Huh? You have someone argue with you in that lecture? No, no one argued. I just said this during the lecture. 
And Rabbi Zitron told me that one of the women that came there came to him after the lecture. And she says, right now I'm taking it. I, I never thought about it that way. From today on, I'm covering my hair, Baruch Hashem. With that's, a scarf. That's what happens when you see the truth. She saw the truth. She said, I never thought about it this way. I never thought it's just a big deal. Cover my hair, wig, this, that. But I never thought. The only... Who wants to be like the Sultan? On that minute, she told him. And he told me. He sent me a, he sent me a message. He's like, you wouldn't believe it. The woman that day took on Kisurosh. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.